Hello, I don't know if you can hear us. I'm able to hear you guys. Well, hi there, everyone. This is David Murphy with TechFire, and I'd like to thank you all so much for joining us. So uh, we're just about to get started here. And uh, as we do, I just want to thank, uh, first of all, uh, everyone who's joined us on the call, despite all the crazy uh, situations going on, earthquakes and pandemics and <laughs> economic collapse. Uh, you know, my heart goes out to all of you on the call. I know things are hard right now. And that's exactly why we uh, wanted to put this, you know, program together. And when I say we, you know, you may see me, uh, but the credit, uh, the full credit goes to the city of Burbank for, uh, for doing this. Uh, they are the ones with the inspiration to want to help all of you and do everything they can uh, since we can't be all together in person as we used to like to do with our Burbank Tech Talk series to join together here uh, via Zoom webinar. And I'm just so grateful to have uh, you know, all of you with us. Uh, uh, we have a great uh, group of panelists lined up today, and we're just so uh, grateful to all of them for joining us. And, you know, uh, it's just uh, obviously a very challenging time. Uh, we know many of you joined us uh, for our programs on the SBA loan programs. The last two webinars we did, uh, we're so grateful uh, to have had uh, uh, everyone from Burbank's local congressman to representatives of the SBA join us for that. And if you did join us for that and you applied for PPP, uh, get your application in uh, again or check with your bank because hopefully they're passing more money for that. But in the meantime, the best way to uh, bring in money uh, is not to worry about uh, these outside programs. It's to bring in money yourself <laughs> through e-commerce. So that's what this program is all about, uh, helping you help yourself uh, and uh, we have some real experts to help you do that. So uh, before we get started, though, I just want to acknowledge uh, uh, the folks who, who, again, really get the credit here. Uh, a special thanks to uh, the Burbank City Council uh, uh, and uh, to all the city staff. Uh, they've been working tirelessly uh, to, to support the community. And just want to uh, call out in particular uh, City Manager Justin Hess and uh, Community Development Director Patrick Prescott and Simone McFarland from uh, the Community Development Department as well. And uh, most of all, the, the wonderful business and economic development division team uh, that is overseeing this and uh, has been running the Burbank Tech Talk series since 2015. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Mary and Marissa, yes, Melissa. Uh, you're wonderful to work with, even though we can't be together in person. It's, uh, it's wonderful to be able to uh, put these on with all of you, so thank you. And uh, you know, if you are uh, in the Burbank community, I hope you'll find these programs helpful. If you're not there and you're joining us from uh, somewhere else in the region. I hope when uh, things return to normal and you think, you know, uh, where you might uh, want to move your company someday, you'll you'll think, huh, maybe uh, maybe Burbank's a good place to be because they uh, they want to do everything they can to help uh, you know businesses there. So uh, just keep that in mind if you're joining us from outside the community too. You're always welcome once uh, things return to normal to to expand to or, or move to Burbank. So uh, you know, without any further ado, I just want to. Um, give you an overview of our uh, wonderful panelists we have today. Uh, uh, you know, we were so lucky to have both uh, uh, local experts from Burbank and national uh, experts uh, uh, from, from Shopify. We're gonna kick things off in just a minute with uh, the two co-owners of um, Network Folio, which is a Burbank-based e-commerce consulting firm that provides a whole range of other services as well. And we'll hear from them shortly. Then we'll uh, get an angle from Shopify, uh, of course, we all know Shopify. Uh, they're one of the uh, the world's biggest online tools for e-commerce. Uh, so couldn't be more grateful to have a chance to dive in there. And then we'll bring things back uh, with another local Burbank expert, Jason Wright, uh, Marketing by Data. Uh, and he'll uh, close things out. And then we'll open things up for uh, a joint Q&A session uh, and have the chance for all the panelists to answer your questions. So. I know without any further ado, uh, you do want me to jump right in uh, here, our speakers, but I just want to say one more thing, and that's uh, if you did you know, not have a chance to join us for our previous webinars, uh, you can check out the videos of those. Uh, they're available on the Burbank website, burbankca.gov. Just click the COVID-19 uh, uh, button and look under business resources, and you'll find a lot of other resources there too. So uh, this, this will be recorded too, and we'll share the link. And without any further ado, I want to turn things over uh, to the team, the co-owners, uh, Network Folio. I'm going to turn things over to you, Gabrielle and Fernando. Okay, perfect. perfect. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, we're going to share some uh, slides here. 
and I'll stop sharing so you can take over. <laughs> Perfect, thank you. And one more thing as they're getting started, everyone, uh, we wanna have all your questions uh, uh, coming in throughout the program. Use the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen and you can enter them there. And then others can also upvote uh, questions so we can see what's most popular. So if you think of a question as we're running through this, uh, put them in there and we'll get them at the end. Mm -hmm. Are you able to see the slide? Looks great. Okay, great. Um, so wanted to thank you, David, for inviting us to this uh, Burbank Tech Talk. Uh, my name is Gabrielle Chanel, and mm -hmm. here we have my partner. Fernando Eiser. Uh, we are formerly Apple retail marketing trainers, and we started our web company, uh, consulting company, I would say uh, at least five, six years ago. We saw a really strong need for businesses that were struggling to connect the dots um, and fully leverage their online presence, and we wanted to help them um, kind of get a sense of, you know, how to navigate um, going from, um, you know, putting together a website and, you know, selling their services and products online. Uh, we specialize in all um, areas of e-commerce projects um, from the initial planning, design mm -hmm. side, development side, as well as marketing and also testing, which is very, very important, which we'll talk a little bit about. Yeah. Um, in addition, we have other partners that we work with. So if there's some specific service that you need, um, for your site or some sort of development um, side. We have partners that we work with that can kind of fill in the gaps for any services that we don't offer directly, but we work with other partners um, with that. Yeah. And so. And that's that's part of the consulting is helping you if, if you contract with those partners or any other partner that you find is helping you through that process. Some people mm -hmm. just want to have an active role in participating in the project. Right. Other people want to just take a step back, let the experts do the thing, and then they handle their own business, which is what they really want to do is run their, their business, not develop a website and that, that sort of thing. So that's where we come in. And um, the problems that we see mostly are um, with this pandemic and COVID-19, it has made it difficult for retail businesses without an online presses to make money. Uh, so you can have a brick and mortar store, but your website is either limited or non-existent. And this is not limited to the COVID-19 pandemic. We see this with a lot of clients. Mm -hmm. uh, they have one of three major problems, which is number one, uh, you don't have an online presence at all. I imagine some of you out there watching this are in that situation. This is the moment where you're saying, oh, wait, I, I need to take a look at this and, and make sure that I'm online if I'm not able to deliver my services or my products uh, in a brick and mortar store. The other problem is a limited online presence. So basically these are clients that we've had that have a website uh, and they feel like they're out there, they're, on, they're online, but they really only have a website that has a little bit of information. They have their address and they have their hours of operation and sort of a description of what they do, but the website doesn't really do much for them. It's what we call a business card website. It just shows who they are, but mm -hmm. it doesn't provide any services or products. Uh, and then there's um, a third problem we've seen with a lot of clients, which is they already have an e-commerce website, but it doesn't work too well. Uh, it needs updating. It's on an old platform. Uh, it's not, it doesn't really deliver, doesn't convert uh, any new technologies they want to take advantage of they can't connect them to that old website, or they don't know how to do it. So those, um, I think, are the three main problems we see. And they're not, again, they're not limited to the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. But I think, you know, we think this is the right opportunity. If you're facing any of those problems, this is a perfect opportunity to jump in and, and get moving on e-commerce. Yeah. And um, so the solutions are what we're providing during this time is, you know, helping folks take their um, business online, as Fernando was saying, whether they have an informational website or maybe just one social media account. Uh, we come in and try to um, basically see how those things are relating down and how we can improve them and kind of expand them um, online to make sure your products and services are highlighted, spotlighted, people understand um, what they get from you, what your goals are, that sort of thing, and how they can reach you. And that falls into communicating digitally, which involves, you know, email marketing, you know, letting people, especially during this time, letting people know 
um, you're there to help, um, you know, how you can help, how they can reach you. Um, even if it's just small updates too, whether you go live on social media or you, again, you know, email marketing, you send out a daily update um, that contain, you know, um, what's happening with your business. And um, we're seeing a lot of folks wanting transparency at this time and understanding, um, you know, they're, I, it seems to be that they're really, you know, wanting more information and the, the quicker they can get to it or know how they can get the information and you being responsive plays a key role in that. Um, and, you know, for the long term, you know, once you go online, you know, we're looking at this as ability to, you know, grow your customer base, reach new folks online as well. So when you are communicating digitally, and you have an online presence, um, you can expand your reach and people that may not know of you from a, a county or, you know, an area over may now be aware of your brand because um, they saw something you've posted um, or something you've highlighted through social media. So that's what we're, you know, trying to help and communicate and work with different um, retailers on. Yeah, and separate from the pandemic, I think we're, we're trying to see it as a win-win. Uh, it may be a requirement now because of the pandemic, but uh, this is, again, this is a win-win. If you do this now, um, you're gonna reap the benefits later. You can you know, easily double your business. Your, your online part of your business could be larger and scale more than your brick and mortar. So, um, you know, this is really how we, want to look at it as an opportunity to, to move forward. Uh, and I think to bring it back to COVID-19, if social distancing policies continue, then um, at least you'll be able to keep your business going uh, and make money while things get back to normal. Um, you know, we, we've been thinking about our own business in terms of uh, we, we don't have a brick and mortar store. We don't, we don't need that type of interaction, but for people who have a store, we're fearful that, even if, if the economy opens up again, yeah. people are going to be fearful. They're not going to be wanting to go into stores as much. Right um, away, so, yeah. so it's definitely something um, to look at, even if the economy opens up. Uh, once things get back to normal, you have another revenue streams, what we talked about a moment ago, uh, that complements your retail operation. That's really important. This is, you know, in all, all honesty, this is something that has to be done. Uh, COVID-19 or no COVID-19, you have to move your business online. Um, and then by having an online business strategy, your e-commerce operation can be as big or bigger than your current retail operation, which is, you know, it's really important. You can scale it way more, obviously, depending on, you know, how you handle your warehouse, what type of product you're selling, service. Uh, you may be limited in how much you can scale it. But in terms of putting your business online, yeah, it could definitely be, if not as big, it could be bigger than your brick and mortar business. And then, so um, tied to the solutions in terms of communicating digitally, moving to e-commerce, email marketing. So um, starting with e-commerce, uh, you wanna make sure your products and services are available online 24 seven. Um, that's, a, that's, that's really important. So this used to be very complicated. Um, uh, platforms were really hard to use. They were expensive. There were not that many out there. Uh, now this is, you know, there's so many available online tools out there. Our preferred one is Shopify. We're gonna, you know, we're gonna hear more about Shopify in a minute. Uh, but Shopify is definitely, if you're looking to build an e-commerce business, um, like we said in the beginning, we come, we're former Apple employees and we feel like Shopify is sort of the Apple of e-commerce <laughs> platforms and that yeah. whenever you think of something you want to do, yeah. Shopify has it already, or yeah. there's an add on that you can, that you can tack on that makes it work. So, yeah. uh, we've, we've used it in the past and it's really, really good. We've never had a lack of, you know, a problem where we lacked a feature that we wanted. So, um, the trick is knowing which platforms to use and how to leverage them. Um, so like I said, for e-commerce, I think for us, Shopify is the preferred one. Uh, social media, we all know all the social media channels, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, LinkedIn, yeah. YouTube, mm -hmm. there, there's so many of them, depending on the type of business, if it's services, mm -hmm. if it's products you're selling, you know, tagging products, uploading your catalog to Facebook. So there's there's many, many different options. Um, and, you know, just to cut in a little bit, as far as social media, just sometimes it can be overwhelming. We've noticed, um, starting with one initial 
um, social media channel and using the others to complement the content that you're posting to your main channel um, helps in getting through, um, you know, anything that may be overwhelming at this time. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to be, you know, the best on every platform, yeah. but just looking, you know, individually at one channel um, that, like you're saying, you know, complements your business strategy, whether it's YouTube and making, you know, videos mm -hmm. and walking people through how to use your product, or if it's just Instagram showing off um, what you can do and, you know, what people can do when they utilize your product, you know, you just decide and then use the other channels to kind of complement. Yeah. So um, you don't have to worry about being in all places at, you know, at once. So yeah, and it may seem like a tall order in the beginning. Uh, we recommend either sticking to one or two social media channels with a good strategy and exploiting those before you are everywhere. But um, if you are going to be on multiple channels, uh, one good thing to do is recycle content. Don't think that you're going to have to produce all this content all the time. You can actually recycle and reuse content on different platforms in different ways. Mm -hmm. For example, a blog post can be a social media post that can turn into FAQs, that can turn into maybe a video on YouTube uh, eventually. So mm -hmm. um, then moving on to communicating digitally, uh, email marketing is really important to stay in touch with your customers. And again, there's so many platforms out there. Some are free, some are really advanced, some are really simple. Uh, but for doing email marketing, there's uh, platforms like MailChimp, there's Campaign Monitor, uh, we've used, uh, we love Klaviyo that connects directly to Shopify and it completely automates your, your email marketing complements what Shopify already offers. So there's, there's many, many solutions out there, uh, that, like I said, they're either free, some are paid, but they're very easy to use, very easy to jump in and you can do it yourself or you can, you know, hire a consultant that can guide you through it or do it for you. So there, okay. there's many options. Um, depending on the scale and how much money you want to spend on the project. Okay. And so uh, I want to wrap that up. Yeah. So basically um, what we do is normally we, um, we try to find the, uh, we, we look at your project. We, we try to learn what your business is like. We take it in like it's our business and trying to, trying to think the way you're thinking, how you want to sell your product and service and try to approach it that way. So um, we've, we know it's hard finding a good consultant. That's partly why we started our business. We've, we've been in that position before and uh, finding people who just, you know, let them run and do what they do and then you don't get the result you want. So uh, what we try to do, like I said, the first step is to consult, is try to get to know your business and pinpoint the needs. Then we put a plan together to find the right tools and technology and the partners. Um, like we said in the beginning, we pretty much offer every type of service uh, in the flow of creating a project, but we do have partners that we can call in. Or like I said before, you can have a partner already and say, hey, you know, I don't know if I'm getting... Uh, what I'm paying for. So we can jump in and say, a consultant can jump in and say, hey, uh, this is what it stipulates in the contract. This is how, this is what they should be delivering. This is what you should be getting for your money. Mm -hmm. And then once a project is completed and delivered, then the third step is to promote. It's marketing, uh, basically doing everything uh, possible to highlight your brand and your products, whether through social media, email marketing, um, uh, Google ads, Google local ads, for example, for brick and mortar stores uh, come into play. So again, there's many, many options, even free options, uh, uh, pay-per-click options where you don't have to pay until somebody clicks and sees your ad and, and goes to your site. So there's many, many options out there to, to do this. It's a matter of having the right people guide you and help you through the process. And this is David to take our, we're getting a little short on time, but yes. I, very clear, you guys are one of the right options out there. You say your website again for everyone. Sure. It's networkfolio.com. We have it up there on the slide. You could send us an email and there's a link to get started on your project and tell us, you know, what you're looking to do, but yeah, networkfolio.com. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> you guys are great. Really uh, appreciate it. Uh, if we were in person, we'd all applaud right now, but I'm just <laughs> doing so <laughs> privately uh, as well. Yeah. So you guys are great. And stick around for Q&A here. And I uh, just want to thank you, you guys so much for joining us on, on short notice. Uh, you guys are great. Uh, and next, we're going to turn things over. Uh, 
Uh, you heard one of the great tools out there is indeed uh, Shopify. And we have uh, Shopify retail guru uh, herself, uh, Kenya Barba, uh, to join us uh, now next and uh, take us through, uh, you know, uh, all the details. So I'm going to turn things over to you, Kenya. Awesome. Thanks so much for having me. And thanks to the previous panelists for the hype up. Um, <laughs> Let me go ahead and share my screen. What I'm going to talk about is we're pretty much going to try to very quickly walk through setting up on Shopify. Um, we're going to cover just the basics just to get you up and running as soon as possible. Um, so it's a lot, but we also offer um, personalized one-on-one -on -one virtual appointments. Um, if you go to our website, la.shopify.com, you can go ahead and access that. Um, but yeah, we're just going to getting started. Uh, we're going to cover you know quite a bit we're going to talk about the various shopify plans that we have to offer um, how to add products and create collections or categories for those products um, adding some pages to help build customer trust um, choosing a theme and designing the theme to get your website up um, and then just some housekeeping setting up your shipping rates and how to accept payments so you can you know pretty much start to launch your site as soon as possible um, so we're just going to go ahead and select a plan Screen disappeared for a second. One moment. Oh, one second, sorry. Technical difficulties. There we go. So we're just going to walk through selecting a plan. Uh, there are three main plans available out there. We are currently offering a 90 day free trial due to the current circumstances. Um, so you can sign up for 90 days and really take your time and play around with the platform, make sure it's the right choice for you. Um, but for most people, I would recommend getting started on the basic Shopify plan. It's $29 a month. Uh, there's also the Shopify plan at $79 a month and the advanced at $300 a month. The biggest difference really between the three um, is just the credit card rates that are charged per plan versus the number of staff accounts and the types of reporting that you have access to. But really basic is where you want to start with. You can always move up or down if you need to. But once you create your trial and start your store, this is what you'll see. Uh, this is what we refer to as the Shopify admin. It's basically your backend. You can access your order information, your customer information, um, view and upload products, look at your analytics. There's a whole realm of options here. Um, but we're just going to go into how to quickly upload some products. If you have a large catalog, you might want to do it via um, a file upload, but we'll just walk through the very basics here. Um, so the really cool thing about the Shopify platform is we try to leave the structure of everything very consistent. So once you kind of get the hang of doing one thing, you pretty much get the hang of doing everything. Um, but this is how you add a product. You want to go in and give it a title. You can give it a description. You can upload images. Um, we also have what we call sales channels, which are basically different avenues that you can market your products to an audience whether that's your online store, whether that's posting them on your Facebook page or tagging the products on Instagram. Um, on the right-hand side, you can choose where you want certain products to show. Um, as you scroll further down, you can give your products a price, um, add inventory quantities, and then add shipping information. Uh, this part's pretty important because the weight of the product is how you determine the cost of the shipping label for the customers. Um, so if you don't already have that, you can just, you know, weigh your products really quickly on a nice scale. Uh, you can also add what we call variants, which are just different product options. So if you were to sell clothing, it might be something like different sizes for the product, different colors, different materials. Uh, once you add variants, you can pretty much combine and mix and match, set prices for certain combinations, um, or just remove certain combinations that don't fit. And then down at the very bottom for every single product, you can also edit the SEO preview for the website. Um, I believe Jason's gonna talk a little bit more about SEO and organic marketing down the line, but it's just good to know that it's available within Shopify too. And once you've added some of your products, you can create what we call collections um, or basic categories of products. So let's say you're selling clothing, you know it might be something like tops, bottoms, accessories, um, and you can do that very easily. So you'd wanna click into products and then click into collections to add them. And again, the structure is pretty similar. You know, you have the title, you have the description. It's really easy to get the hang of the platform and just really get started. Uh, the biggest difference here with collections versus products is the collection type. Um, so you can manually add products to a collection one by one. 
doable but can get tedious after a while, um, or you can automate the collection. So basically, if a product meets a certain condition that you set, it will just automatically get it added into that catalog. Um, so it can be something like product price, um, product tag, product vendor, pretty much the combinations are infinite. Um, and again, down here at the bottom, you can add the SEO preview for the collection. Uh, then what you're going to want to do is just create a few different what we call pages. Um, there's just quick little landing pages with information that you want to provide to your customers. Um, so here you want to click into the sales channel online store. Um, it'll open up a drop down and you'll click into pages. Um, again, very similar structure. You give it the title, the content. Um, you can create whether the page will be visible right away, set a specific publish date, or hide it until you're ready to post it to your website. Um, so pages that we recommend adding to your online store are things like an about us page, a contact us page where people can reach out to you easily, um, your refunds and exchanges policy, terms of service, shipping information. So it's all really crucial, A, not only for helping build customer trust because they can see that you're a well-established brand, all the information is there and easy for them to find. Um, it, it decreases your support debt because people won't have to reach out to you to find out this information. Um, and it helps with Google SEO because it's boosting up your page, making your website more robust and just giving it credibility. Um, so this is a brand called The Detox Market. They have a gorgeous About Us page. Um, I personally just really love that it's broken down into different segments. So it's very digestible and easy to just find what you're looking for. Um, and they really just make the brand more personal by showing their founder and her family just for you to really connect with them on a more emotional level. Um, but once we've had all those building blocks, we've created some products, we've added some collections, we have all of those pages ready to go. Uh, now you can really get into designing the actual front facing website for customers to discover you. Um, and the way you do that within Shopify is by using what we call a theme. Uh, theme is basically just a pre-designed template that you can add to your store and then customize as you see fit. Um, this here is our Shopify theme store. It's just themes.shopify.com. Um, and you can browse all of the themes that we have available. Shopify offers eight free themes that are always free of charge and you can customize them, or there are more robust paid themes that you can play around with. Um, in the theme library, you can really filter by whatever you're looking for, whether you have a small product catalog, um, you want your product page to have a specific feel to it, maybe you want Instagram feed as an option there, you can really filter to find the perfect theme for your store. Um, and let's say you've found this great theme symmetry, but $180 is our paid theme average. Um, you can view a demo of what a theme looks like on a live store to get a, a feel if it's right for you. Um, but let's say you're not quite ready to purchase it yet because it is, you know, a good chunk of change. Um, you can try the theme, add it to your store and customize it indefinitely without having to pay for it. Once you want to publish it to your site, that's when you just have to pay but you can really play around with as many themes as you like just to make sure that it's right for you. But once you've chosen the theme and you have all your content, we can really just get into designing your website. And don't worry, you don't need to know any coding. I definitely don't, it's really straightforward. Um, what you're gonna wanna do is go into your online store sales channels and open up the theme. Um, here you'll see what your live theme is or your theme library if you have backups. Um, so what you're going to want to do is just customize your current theme. And this is what the theme editor looks like. Every single theme on the Shopify theme store is optimized for both desktop and mobile. Um, so there's no need for you to do any, you know, fancy coding changes. It's all just built right into the platform. Um, every single theme is broken down into sections and you basically just go in section by section and add your content. You can also change the colors on your website, the font that you choose, add social media icons, and more depending on the theme that you've chosen. But this is just a really quick walkthrough of what it looks like. You basically click into a section, add your content, whether that's images, products, a collection that you want to feature, um, maybe even a map showcasing where your brick and mortar is located. Um, you customize it as you see fit, and then just save those changes. Um, so in this instance, I'm just uploading an image for the slideshow, changing the, the heading a little bit, high tech fire. And then you just save section by section as you go along. Um, you can just work on all of this in one go or just take it day by day and go a little bit at a time. 
But now, you know, we've skipped over a lot, but your website's pretty much ready to go. Uh, we just want to take care of some back end stuff to make sure that the customer experience is also working properly. Uh, this is very important is setting up your shipping rates correctly. Um, and there's a few different options available, but we're just going to go through the most straightforward one to make sure that your site is up and ready to launch as soon as possible. Um, if you go into your settings down at the bottom and then hit shipping, um, you can go ahead and really tailor your shipping options. Um, when you launch your Shopify store, by default, uh, we set up two geographic shipping zones, uh, domestic, so shipping to the US, and then the rest of the world. Um, then within each geographic zone, you can really tailor how much you want to charge for shipping, what restrictions you want to have, all of that good stuff. Um, so here's a quick video that kind of walks you through what we do. We're just going to go with what's called carrier rates. Basically, this is just pulling directly from UPS, USPS, or DHL to provide the customer the exact cost of the label. Um, this will calculate based on the weight of the orders that's in their cart and how far the package is traveling. Um, so here you just go into the geographic zone, use carrier to calculate rates, and then select off the types of services that you want to offer. Um, but once that's done, your shipping's pretty much ready to go. This takes all of the guesswork out of it. Your customers pay exactly what they need to pay, not a penny more or less. And then just the very last thing is actually accepting payments. Also a little bit of an important part, you know, getting some cash flow into your business right now. Um, we have a number of payment gateways available. Um, you know, you can choose PayPal, you can select Afterpay, you can accept credit card payments, any combination of the available payment providers. Uh, Shopify offers their own payment gateway. It's called Shopify Payments. Depending on the plan that you're on, the credit card rates will vary, but the basic plan starts at 2.9% plus 30 cents per transaction. Um, so to set up Shopify Payments, you can just go into your payment provider settings and just hit complete account setup. Um, here it's gonna ask you a few questions about your business, what type of business you are, whether you're an LLC, an independent proprietorship, et cetera. Um, it'll then ask you for some personal information if you have an EIN, the last four digits of your social security number, um, and then you just enter the bank account information that you want your payouts delivered to. But that's basically, in a nutshell, the really quickest, fastest way to set up a Shopify store. Um, but I know this is a very brief, very condensed walkthrough. If you want really a more personalized, slowed down walkthrough, you can scan this QR code. It'll take you to our website, la.shopify.com. We offer free 45 minute one-on-one -on -one virtual consultations. Uh, we also do webinars, classes. We host weekly happy hour events on Fridays just to kind of get a more different business sense out there. Um, but if you scan the QR code, you can come to our website and we'd be happy to help you out one-on-one. -on -one. Awesome. Well, thank you, Kenya. And again, applause to you on behalf of all of us. Uh, really appreciate it. Uh, that was awesome. Uh, really kind to make the time to join us. And uh, it's just uh, obviously uh, the case. There's so much out there on Shopify that would be so helpful that hopefully all of you on this uh, webinar can get going, whether it's with Shopify or another platform and, and get that money coming in soon. Uh, so thank you very much indeed, Kenya. Uh, and we're going to uh, I'll get to some questions I saw come in specifically about Shopify uh, in a little bit at the end of the program here. But first, I want to turn things over uh, in just a moment here to our next speaker, uh, who is another Burbank uh, local expert, uh, uh, Jason Wright. Uh, he is uh, the president and founder of Marketing by Data. And I know I've seen a preview of Jason's uh, PowerPoint. He did a lot of hard work <laughs> burning the midnight oil to put together some great resources for us. And we're so grateful. Jason, to you for not only doing that, but for joining us. And uh, I'll turn things over to you here. Sounds good. Let me know. Am I coming through clear? You bet. Uh, All right. We can then see you. And uh, let's see. Uh, I just want to hit uh, screen share. Let me share my screen and get things going. All right. All right. Awesome. Okay. Let me present. All right. You able to see the, the presentation well? Looks great. All right, so uh, my name's Jason Wright. I own an agency that's primarily based here in uh, Burbank in which I've been doing marketing for a long period of time in which I train uh, other marketing experts as well too in which I've worked for and with companies such as Disney, MySpace, Playboy, a large legal firm, 800 No Cuffs, 
um, been featured in Search Engine Journal, uh, in Mastermind Groups, and in Internet Marketing Gold, SEO Rockstar has been a part of SEO Intelligence Agency. So not just that, but also with ads, we're a Google Premier Partner. Um, and there's a lot going on um, overall all the time, right? But now it's just not a unique time in a sense. And dealing with COVID, what's going on and how to get you guys positioned. But also really what I want to show within this presentation is uh, some, some snippets that you guys can take and implement right away. So I'm jump into the next part. So our overview for e-commerce for retail, essentially, we're going to go through a three-phase process, e-commerce platforms, analytics, tracking channels, and some metrics that you guys need to know in order to be able to measure success for what you're trying to achieve. So the three-phase process that we use and we feel that everyone should use is that you're going to want to build your foundation. Your foundation is your an optimized website that's using best practices for conversion rate optimization and SEO. You want to also set up your analytics and tracking and go into more of that in a minute. You want to drive traffic is that second part of the phase, because if you're driving traffic to an unoptimized website, you're not going to get the results and you're just kind of burning cash and time. And then you're going to want to optimize, analyze and repeat. So you're going to take those learnings and start implementing uh, the optimizations that you see or pulling back on, on things that you may not want to continue with because you're seeing success in other ways. So we've been talking about Shopify, but there's a lot of different platforms and I've named out the uh, kind of the top four of what we work a lot with in way it is that WordPress, WooCommerce, that's a, it's a, it's a low cost solution. It's just as powerful as the other ones. It's just powerful as Shopify. Um, and kind of the difference between Woo, uh, WooCommerce, which is integrated with WordPress and Shopify is Shopify kind of nickels and dimes you. So what you're going to find is you get, oh, it's $30 to get started a month, but then you need an, uh, an app to do email um, for certain types of campaigns for overlay pop-ups. Next thing you know, you've got like four or $500 in apps that you need in order to optimize the site to get the best for uh, conversion, as well as sometimes as reviews such as uh, Yachtpo. Um, and those are kind of the two big differences where WordPress is more of just one-time purchase of the app and there's a lot of free apps. The other big difference that we're, uh, WooCommerce or uh, WordPress has and WooCommerce is you can really optimize in a technical SEO standpoint where Shopify, it's not as easy, big commerce, not as easy in which your Shopify URL structure is restricted and based on how the platform wants you to do it versus how is optimal for search. And then there's Magento, which is really, we see the best, greatest benefit on enterprise level, or if you've got a lot of products and that gives you the ability to do anything very complex and I'd say for any of these if you're just starting up it's it's ideal to start with a professional who can really help you identify the right platform but also create it and make sure that they use the best practices that we're going to talk about that a marketing agency will be able to help implement. Uh, analytics and tracking very important I've got Google Analytics here as it's the free there's a number of options out there but use Google Analytics as it's a free option. Um, it's also very robust in which you can integrate a lot of different uh, or integrates uh, in being able to track all your channels and use enhanced e-commerce. Want to make sure to have that enabled so you can see down to tracking by source, revenue, transactions. You could set up your, fun your, uh, your um, conversion funnel, your shopping funnel, and watch how traffic flows for through it and find those points where they're falling out. Then your Facebook, and very important, create your business.com facebook.com account so that way you're able to set up your ad accounts and effectively set your pixel up and make sure on all this stuff on anything that you guys have you own the google analytics account you own the facebook pixel you're the one adding agencies and employer employees to and from it because what i have happened with a lot of our clients will come in and we'll try and take over the Google Analytics account. We'll try and get added to the pixel. And guess what? The old agency owns it. And it's one of their ways that they kind of, we find that they like to keep and um, handcuff clients to them is that, oh, well, we own Google, Google Analytics. And if you go away, you're not going to be able to have all your data because it's going to be with us. Or, oh, we own the pixel. Um, and if you go somewhere else, you have to create a new pixel. You're going to lose all this data that you have on this season pixel. So own everything. It doesn't matter what it is. Hosting, do not use an agency for hosting use one of the big ag aggregator or one of the big companies to get your hosting on there um, so that way you can remove these agencies that you're going to have relationships with um, over time that change 
Converge rate optimization. Now, one of the biggest things that you need to be aware of is a pretty website does not equal a converting website. Like you go there, you know, uh, we were seeing some Shopify templates it's, it, and they look pretty, but in most cases, the pretty website in general does not convert. There's some very key pieces that you need to have. Sliders don't work. We find that if you look at the data that we've been testing, sliders do not work as a tool. You see them on the home page. They do not do the best converting. Once you go to the second slider, the view rate drastically drops. And once you're on the third, no one's seen it. So some key pieces that you want to have above the fold, which means above what you see on your screen, which whether it be mobile or desktop, a clear call to action. You want it to really pop out. My, our call to actions will be a lot of times red buttons like buy now, shop now, buy this. A clear message about the page or product. So you want to make sure that you're saying what the product is. Like one of our companies, they weren't messaging that the shirt had a built-in feature to it. So people thought they were paying $90 for just a regular tank top. But it turned out that once you add in the built-in bra, it was like, oh, well, this makes sense as far as the price point now. You want to have a create an incentive to purchase. In some ways, this can be uh, difficult depending on your product or service. But what it is, is you could have a countdown timer like, you know, get this by Friday, it's Memorial Day weekend. You create a time period that makes people feel a sense of urgency to need to make the purchase at that moment. And then the one of the other pieces, you want to have credibility and social proof. And social proof could be an influencer, it could be ratings, it could be badges. So there's a number of different things that you could have in place so that way people really feel comfortable in making that purchase and that it's credible. Stars is one that's one on Shopify where you deal with like Yotpo and people leaving reviews and you've got five stars, you got 30 people who've left five stars. So there's social proof that helps as well. Another piece, exit overlay. Uh, that's where when you go to exit a website, you'll see something that will pop up and that's a good place to where you can have a number of different options such as capture the email, a cart reminder. Um, it, uh, it could be a subscriber notification for in browser push notifications, which is one of the things that's listed as well too. Uh, and you can go to subscriber.com and when people go to a site at a certain point, they'll get it and what it allows you to do if they enable or um, um, sign up or click the button that says yes, um, in the future or in that time, you can create a welcome series that will in browser pop up in your browser. And you may, so you, may, you should have seen something like this where in the bottom right corner, you'll have a little pop up, a little marketing message that comes in that says, hey, uh, this is what's going on. You can push product through it. Hey, this is a new product. Hey, it's a new video. Um, and then one of the, the other pieces that you can do is hotjar.com, which is, allows you, it's a free option for three heat maps and video recordings up to 100 to where you can see how users engage on the site. So you can watch them as they flow through. Now your marketing channels, you've got traditional marketing, TV, radio, outdoor, we're not gonna cover that. You've got digital, uh, I listed some of the main ones that we're gonna discuss here. You've got search engine optimization, which is where people go and they do a search, whether that be on Bing, Yahoo, uh, DuckDuckGo, Google. Uh, you've got your social media. So your social organic, that's very difficult to grow. So I've worked with companies in which they've got, they're paying someone 4,000 to dollars a month to do their social organic and they got a hundred followers. It's not worth your time. Don't put your money in there. Make sure you've got people that you can reach messaging with. Pay to play in social is really the way to go unless you create something that's viral or pick up on something that's viral, which is very difficult to do to get that viral uh, video uh, or piece of content going. Paid advertising, you've got essentially two different types of paid advertising. You've got keyword base and audience base. Keyword base is like if you were to go into Google, I would say, uh, I'm looking for dog food, dog food near me. Audience space is you're looking for people who purchase the product or service that you have, and you're trying to find those characteristics around the demographic and psychographic uh, and, and habits that you can get in front of those people, you know, people who own, people who are interested in dogs, uh, a lot of them may own a dog. So you want to target them and try and get them uh, the dog food or treats or uh, whatever type of toys that may be in front of them. You've got affiliate. I think a lot of people really overlook the affiliate. And what that is, is that you provide people with revenue who purchase through purchase your product through your site or on their site. Um, and they do all the marketing work. So essentially you say, hey, I want to give 20% for any conversions. Then you have an affiliate marketer go out there. Uh, maybe they have a website around um, dog toys. They post your dog toy with a link back. Petco actually does this. You can find their affiliate program. Uh, they'll, then they'll create a review on certain dog toys. They'll click on that link. It'll go back 
to the Petco website. You see this a lot with Amazon where people will say, learn more or see price and it takes you into Amazon. And with Amazon, what happens is anything that you purchase within the cart within 24 hours, they're gonna get a revenue share for. So it's a good way that you can build uh, awareness and pay for the actual transactions that take place. You got email, which can be used in a number of different ways, such as your shopping cart abandonment, which you wanna make sure to do. And then referrals, which we all love because people talking great things about us and getting us people to come and purchase from us is an awesome way to do uh, or a great return ROI. So here's some SEO tips. These are very standard. There's a lot more that we go into, which we look into uh, for our consumers. And the big thing is that you wanna make sure that you look at who your top competitors are. And then what we do is we use proprietary tools to figure out why are these guys ranking in the top five or 10 positions. We re-engineer that and then we apply on top of that, the best practices to get us into the top page. If you're on the second page of a search engine, you're relatively dead as a business in organic. So always one page, one keyword. Uh, you can use long tail of that, but make sure it's your uh, qualified keyword that you're trying to target. Uh, one header tag per page is a little technical, but it's uh, very important that you have your keyword within there. A lot of times I'm finding with developers that are building sites they'll make it pretty uh, you know be some random word like uh, in the header tag and you think of your tags essentially as the table of contents of the page um, and if it says we're great it, it's not going to help you as far as uh, organic listings or even the user experience uh, we found that on general 1500 words per page is what you want to have that seems to work best in getting into some of the top positions you want to be on a secure site https and on top of that i didn't put you want to have www reason for that is that if you are your domains um, spammed, you can easily change the subdomain www to www one dot domain name, versus having to change a new to a new domain because your domain got hit. Another is in your images and videos, make sure to use descriptive text. Don't use forward slash img underscore zero zero one or or img slider or slider one slider two slider three. It doesn't help. You also want to rank your images as well too and videos with the file names for people searching for that. So if you're you know if you have a special unique pet toy, you want a unique pet toy at Petco, and then you would come up and when someone searches unique toy under image search, hopefully you're going to get that in position. There's ways to do. And then you wanna make sure, uh, one thing is that adding videos to project pages. I don't have the source for this, but it was a two to 3% increase in conversion for videos on product pages. And then you wanna set up your Google search and being webmaster tools. So that way you can see what's going on organically as far as what pages are being indexed. It gives you an idea of if there's issues on the site, you can see what traffic's going to what page, what keywords are coming up for backlinks to the site. And also this is very important. This is one of the most important things of this presentation. Do not trust a web developer to do your SEO or marketing. Do not trust them. They build websites, they are not marketing experts. And we come across this and we deal with web developers who think they're experts, but they're not. Let the SEO, let the marketing experts do your marketing and have them help you guide the developer on how to build a site. Very important. Marketing channels, paid ad tips. Um, so use your keywords and your headlines and your descriptions helps with your quality score. So if you're searching for a uh, unique dog toy, make sure your headline unique dog toy is one of those. And in the description, it's unique dog. You know, we have un great unique dog toys. Uh, check out our shop now. Uh, use broad match modified versus broad. I see a lot of new businesses who are trying to do it themselves. They'll go in and they'll put dog treats very broad and you get so many different random variations versus buy dog treats with the plus in front of it. It's very important. You're going to get much more targeted search that way. And also you want to start trying some smart shopping campaigns because we've seen a lot of success in uh, with Google being in Yahoo, especially when they have your product category. And product category is when you go, oh, dog treats, and Google has a specific listing for dog treats, whereas you have a unique product that doesn't necessarily have something as far as a category listed yet. It's more of a general category. doesn't do as well because you got to think you're trying to game an algorithm. The algorithm needs to understand kind of what's going on. And then also, if you guys aren't aware, Google announced free shopping ads because of what's going on right now. So make sure that you get your Merchant Center set up so that way you can start using Flexify. On, if you're using Shopify, Flexify is a free app that you can put your feed into the Merchant Center that'll list your products on Google Shopping. And then Facebook and Instagram ads, broad audiences, narrow it down, but you want to get about one to two million in an audience at least and let the algorithms do their job. You want to make sure your ads are 
targeted for top of funnel, middle of funnel, and bottle of funnel. Top of funnel, drive uh, cold traffic. Middle of funnel, you fu warm it up a little bit. Bottle of bottom of funnel, you close them. In e-commerce, a lot of times with product pages, you can cut out middle of funnel and just do top and bottom funnel. If you want to view super your awesome, Jason. We're just getting a little low on, on time. Just to okay, I'm almost to the end. I'm, I'm, I'll speed it up. Um, view your competitor ads, use that URL. This presentation is going to have a link at the end. Um, and then some key metrics for your target five plus ROAS, 1% CTR, $1 or less on CPC. Your business metrics, you're going to want to make sure to know this. Your lifetime value, you know, what's the, uh, how much does a customer spend with you over its life, average order value, and you want the 30% of lifetime value is a benchmark cost for acquisition. I've got a F, uh, free Facebook e-commerce calculator. You take that link and uh, view it. And then content, people ask, do I need to create content? On e on, in general, we have our main service pages and our product pages, and we don't necessarily do a lot of blog content because we can drive success through using our proprietary tools on SEO and driving paid traffic um, in which that saves you a lot of time. But if you want to do content and we find promotion, uh, content is a king, promotion of the content is king. Um, and if you want to do content skyscraper, you can see the presentation. I'll give you a link here. Thanks for your time. If you got questions, feel free to reach out to me at any time. Uh, my email's there, the presentation, that's the link to it. Um, and all right, David, it's all yours. Awesome, Jason. That was fantastic. Uh, big applause, uh, virtual applause from all of us, I'm sure. Uh, thank you very much indeed. And uh, just, uh, you know, we want to thank all of our panelists. I think perhaps uh, before I, I jump into questions, so I just want to also give a shout out. I saw Tom from the Burbank Chamber uh, on the call. Thank you very much to the Chamber for being a partner in these events as well. We want to reach as many brick and mortar mom and pop businesses to help folks out. Uh, please uh, everyone on this uh, you know, webinar, share it with uh, friends and family and colleagues you have, help get the word out, uh, get these resources out. There's a lot of good stuff uh, from our speakers. And, uh, and also, you know, we realize there may be folks on the call too on the webinar who uh, didn't have a, a retail business yet, but may have lost their job and thinking of starting something new and, and selling online. So we hope this is helpful for all of you too. So uh, I think one question I saw come in that I know you, Jason, and, and Gabrielle and Fernando will definitely want to answer. Um, uh, what, what is it like to work with a consultant? Uh, what are the fees like? How does one get started? Uh, you can jump right in, Jason, first. <laughs> so um, working with a consultant, the way that we structure it is essentially we try and partner with the business as if we're an extension of it. Um, we want to be involved in helping them make decisions and, and someone that they can rely on during this time. It can get very complex is what I was just going through and trying to make these decisions. Um, the fees in general, I mean, they could start. So depending on the type of agency, like for us, we're going to start if you want to do just off top, if we're going to run paid ads, it's pretty standard. We're either 750 a month or we're going to charge 15% of ad spend, which is greater. And then we usually have initial setup fee. If we're doing on-site optimizations, it depends on the size of the site, but usually our fees will start at a thousand uh, per month for organic, but it depends on the complexity. I know that web developers will have a more standard uh, fee. Like if you're building a site, say 10 page e-com site, they'll, you know, it could be anywhere from five or 2,500 to 5,000. Be very careful of those low cost options that you see out there because you get what you pay for. Mm -hmm. And Tell us about Network Folio. Yeah, for us, uh, same experience and something uh, something that Jason said that was very important is don't let your web developer do your marketing. Uh, that's something we've, we've definitely learned over time. That's, that's really, really key for a lot of businesses. And you would think that it only affects small businesses starting out. We've seen it with large businesses too. They have the wrong person doing the wrong thing. So um, for us, uh, we do a couple of different things. We do retainers uh, for a monthly fee. It depends on the scope of the project. We've had projects that are, you know, require a lot of hours and last for months. Um, there was a, a large uh, e-commerce project we had that lasted more than a year in development and planning. So we either have a retainer, usually starts around four to 5,000 a month uh, for consulting. Uh, and or basically it could be an hourly rate. So we do around 100 to 150 uh, per hour. It depends on the scope of the project, basically. So if it's worth it for the client to have a retainer of 5,000, would they save money because they wouldn't be paying an hour if they're you know, spending that much time uh, in a project, then we do a retainer. 
if it's worth it for the client to do an hourly rate where they save money, then we do an hourly rate. So it depends on the project, the scope, the length, the services they need, that type of thing. So uh, yeah, that's usually the range. Fantastic. And uh, Kenya, uh, just to uh, remind folks, if they want to get started on Shopify, uh, what should they do? Yeah, if they just want to get started on Shopify, they can go to shopify.com to start their 90 day free trial. Um, if they want to meet with a guru like myself or one of my teammates, you can go to la.shopify.com. Uh, we do free remote virtual one on one sessions. Fantastic. And uh, uh, for every, one question we have, we'll be able to get a copy of the presentations. We'll certainly be sending out the video, but uh, if our speakers, if you haven't already, if you want to send us your uh, presentation links, uh, we'll send those out to folks too. Uh, these were great presentations. Thank you all very much. Um, and we, we have a, a question here about, um, uh, you know, what, what it's like to, to integrate. Um, well, I'm actually going to combine a few questions here and, and also one that some of you may be having. Um, what, what should people's expectations be? You know, the need is getting going right now, right away. <laughs> but realistically, um, uh, how, how long, say you have, you know, stuff in your warehouse collecting dust right now, you want to you wanna sell it. Uh, how long do folks need to, you know, to budget uh, to get things going? And, and, you know, is it the case where maybe you build it and they won't come? You really actually have to market for a while to start seeing sales. You kind of, anyone who wants to answer, you know, uh, set expectations for folks here. So uh, I'll kick it off. One, if you have a website that's already built and pretty much set up that way, you can start driving traffic. Paid ads, you can start tra driving traffic right away. Take those key business metrics. You can find out what you're looking to generate a sale as. You got to put aside a, a test budget. Um, with paid ads, right away, you can start getting sales. The organic side is going to take some time to build that, but in, in over time. Um, so simple answer, paid ads, sales right away. Yeah, and we've seen clients that uh, in terms of digital communication where they either have a, uh, an email list already, but they haven't leveraged it, or uh, they haven't started collecting email addresses at all. So that also changes the timeline. So you have customers already that you can reach out to right away, and you just need to plug them into these platforms and send emails, or you're creating a website now to start getting people to sign up to your, to your email newsletter. So that, that makes a big difference too, in terms of the timeline of how you can start converting. Great. And Kenya, we have a few questions about Shopify. Uh, uh, folks are asking, uh, obviously when you use uh, delivery services like FedEx or UPS, uh, you know, do you just pay uh, the rates that, that they charge or is there like an additional fee Shopify? charges on those. And then someone also asked, can, can you use other couriers, uh, you know, even local couriers uh, for delivery too? Yeah. So there's, it's an interesting question. Um, like Jason said, Shopify is kind of the basic framework for things. Not every single merchant has this individual need. So that's why we leave it up to the individual person to decide whether they want to add this or not. Um, if you do already have your own negotiated rates with UPS, FedEx, et cetera, you can bring that over. Um, they are right. It is an additional fee because, again, this isn't a need that everybody has. Um, as for local couriers, sometimes some of them develop apps already built into Shopify just to make it easier. Um, some of them don't, but they can integrate an API to your store. I would just reach out to those couriers directly. Fantastic. And someone also asked about, uh, you know, is Shopify com combinable if they already have a, a GoDaddy hosted site built on WordPress? Uh, uh, can they integrate Shopify, someone asked? Yeah, there is a way to integrate um, WordPress with Shopify and kind of link the two. It's a bit, it's not complex, but it does take some time. So if they'd like, they can just book a free one-on-one -on -one with us and we can really walk you through in detail. Fantastic. Well, uh, we're hitting the, the noon hour here. Uh, so I do encourage uh, everyone to follow up with our speakers uh, if they do want to learn more about uh, taking this, uh, making it actionable. <laughs> and uh, I also want to thank uh, uh, City of Burbank uh, and the Burbank Chamber of Commerce, uh, our partners with us. Again, you see me on the screen here, but uh, I'm just, uh, you know, I'm just the one moderating and hosting. Uh, it's a privilege to try to help folks out, but uh, again, uh, full, full credit goes to the wonderful team at the City of Burbank for convening these. So it can be, um, you know, uh, harder times, I know, for everyone. Uh, just please know that we're rooting for all of you. We want you to not only, you know, survive this crisis, uh, but, but thrive. Uh, Certainly in terms of health first, but uh, 
in terms of your business. And, uh, you know, it's a tough time economically. So we hope these uh, wonderful speakers uh, were able to, you know, provide some actionable resources. Of course, the next step is to follow up with them and, and get going and, uh, you know, uh, take that idea and make it reality and, and start having those sales come in. So, uh, you know, on behalf of everyone, thank you very much to our speakers. Uh, really, really appreciate all of you joining us. Uh, just, uh, you know, go on and on here. There's a lot of uh, very helpful information you all had to share. Sorry, we had to cut things off there. But I um, do want to invite all of you to uh, uh, join us, all of our attendees on our next uh, webinar. We'll be uh, doing a program on uh, the most, uh, you know, famous uh, industry in Burbank, the entertainment industry. Um, again, we're delighted to partner with the Burbank Chamber of Commerce, of course, uh, in the city as well uh, for this. And that will be uh, May 6th. Uh, so we'll be sending out invites to everyone. Uh, you know, uh, certainly uh, we, we all know, personally, even if we're not in the entertainment industry, how uh, <laughs> the abundance of streaming services uh, have given us options if we have any free time, uh, you know, but, but we'll be looking at how is the industry itself, the, the small businesses and the big businesses weathering this crisis and how is it going to change things and how do we make sure that Burbank media capital of the world continues to be that media capital of the world. So that should be a fun program, but I'll be back. And again, thank you so much to all of our panelists, to uh, all of you for joining us, our attendees and uh, best wishes. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you guys. Bye -bye. Thank you so much for having us. Thank Thanks. you. Bye-bye.